Hey everyone, so I have another update on my Space Arcade game. Um, starting off, I'm going to run this in debug mode instead of release, just so we can get a better idea of what's happening. Uh, Alright, so running this in debug mode instead of release mode, so we're going to have fewer ships, um, but it'll make debugging easier. Alright, so what I've created is a system for behavior trees. And it's actually taken a little while, so there's it's been a lot of code and not a lot of visuals, so I haven't been able to make videos along the way that have anything really to show other than just code. But um, essentially, behavior trees are a construct used in artificial intelligence AI. They're essentially decision-making trees. And what I've done here is I've created a system for behavior trees so I can construct them with this system. And I've constructed a very, very simple one, a very simple, like, wandering around behavior tree. And so, um, in order, there was a lot of issues. In order to debug it, I created a debugging rendering system that, um, if you know what this means, it uses instance rendering. So all these uh, debug lines are a single draw call. Um, anyways, the debug lines show the path that the ship is trying to take. And so if we follow this guy around, you can see that he's following that red line, and then he'll eventually decide he wants to go somewhere else, and he wanders off to that location and goes to that place. Um, so there's a lot of issues with that, and sometimes the behavior issues would lock up, and I didn't know why. So I created a tool, this little hitbox picker tool, that uses the collision hitbox boxes to um, pick objects. And so I can tell it to enable right-click picking. Uh, looks like I need to make the UI a little bit larger. but um, And I can right-click on one of these, and I'll follow this, the ship. And so now I can track a ship and watch what it does. Um, the camera's a little jittery at the moment. I haven't really fleshed that out. It's more of a debug kind of follow. Um, but I hope to, to flesh out a full real camera system soon. Uh, but as you can see, he's kind of turning and spinning around. And this little tool that I created tells me the address of the object. So I am following ship that is 0A0AA93C. And what I created in the behavior tree is essentially a the ability to log all the trees. And so you can set this to true. Um, in the code, and it's a constant expression, so it's a compile time check. Uh, but and I have a compile time actual branch on it. So if we look at the branch, it's if const expr and then that flag. So this is basically it's it's like using macros; it gets compiled out or compiled in depending on if this bool is set, which is a compile time thing. Um, anyways, so if we turn that on, we can run the code and we'll start to see a log output of what all the trees are doing. And the trees are essentially these state machines. Um, and if you're not familiar with that, just imagine like a machine with cogs and things turning. And so debugging it is a little tedious, but not impossible. I created, I made it in a way that is, it's possible to, de to debug. It just has a lot of tedious things happening um, to make sure the state is being maintained and, and you can abort state and that kind of stuff. But the idea, if you want to debug it manually, you can put a breakpoint right here after we um, start the executing the state machine. And I left a note telling you to watch certain values, and you can kind of get an idea of what this log is going to be outputting. And so here you can see the log is outputting like push child, executing, popped child. And these are referring to nodes in the actual tree. Um, and we're getting, uh, we're getting these addresses, which are corresponding to the addresses that we might see down here if we were to pick something. So if I pick this guy, and the logging makes it a little more laggy because print statements are slow, and that's why it's, you can compile them out. So if we look, we've got this address 0A861664, and what we can do is go into that log and copy the entire log, uh, and convert this this address here, the 0A86, um, to decimal and find the log and 
or find that number in the log and we can see exactly what that behavior tree is doing at any given time. I'm not going to do that now though because it's rather tedious. Also there if you really need it um, you can with a debugger set this value target debug tree uh, to that address you picked basically only debug the tree that you're interested in. It's a little bit of work because you have to know who you're debugging so use the picker to fig figure out who you're debugging and then you break somewhere in your code by putting a breakpoint like this and then you will use your debugger to set this value to the address you picked and you can debug that individual one. If we switch just over to release mode you will be able to see a very large number of ships and there is some overhead in the behavior trees or in the execution of the behavior trees. I tried to make it as event based as much as possible. There are some cases though where things need to be ticked and so there's ticking. So if we look here is 10,000 ships running the behavior trees and I am getting 26 frames roughly 25 and a half or back to 26 now so roughly 26 frames per second with 10,000 ships um, and so it looks pretty cool coming in here and seeing all these these flying things um, and so creating a system like this you know obviously is very bug prone I needed to create tickers in my time management um, and I needed to, to create quite a few things and so what I did was I created unit test and I have this file automated test and in this case I am using a macro instead of a const expert but if I turn this macro on and then recompile there will be a new suite of behavior tree tests that we can see execute that test a lot of the common functionality of behavior trees so that I know the system is reliable while I'm making trees and there's a couple issues with timers and tickers that I found and created test cases to cover those too. Okay, so if we go over to the log, we now see that it is running behavior tree test and all of these tests are created past. So testing of boards, decorators, memory operations, selector trees, sequence trees, um, services, and then kind of like deferred execution. So things that you know, update over time. Um, you know, so say you start a task, it needs to update occasionally, but not on a ticker. You want it to have a timer and tick. So that's what that is. And we have these timer tests, and I added some tests at the end for tickers that cover edge cases and the basic functionality of tickers. And so now I feel like I'm in a good spot to start creating behavior trees that actually have them fight and things. I may need to add uh, some features to the trees. But I think that's where I'm going to go next is having the ships fight each other, which is going to require a lot of changes in the level. Obviously, I'm going to need to assign teams to the ships. And I've started some of that work, but it's not really fleshed out yet. So this is what the behavior trees actually look like. Um, I'm saying behavior tree equals, and then I have this function uh, that creates shared pointers and does a couple initialization stuff for us. Um, but anyways, you, you specify the tree, then you start laying out nodes. This is a super simple one. It's like create a selector, and really the only thing it's selecting now is a sequence of nodes, and that sequence is find a random location and go to that random location. Um, the trees have stored memory, and you define the, at least the default values like th this. So in your tree, at the bottom of it, you can create this memory initializer struct, which is just a type def for some containers but um, and you specify the keys name uh, and the value you want the key to take on so like ship location is a vec3 and this is just some implementation details the primitive wrapper is for things that are not um, my game objects basically so like ints floats doubles and I treat vectors so vectors of three floats as uh, primitives in this case 